Hey Pit Monsters, what is up? Today we're going to do some Spanish barbecue with Iberico ribs and patatas bravas. We're in a noisy studio today, we got an excavator in the background working its way to all the old concrete and bricks that were laying here where the, we used to have the cow stables. So it's all going to be gone and it's going to be a beautiful terrace, but before we get there we have to, you know, deal with the current situation. But you can't stop us, we're going to make an awesome dish and we'll go totally Spanish on this dish starting with Iberico ribs, one of the most precious, most beautiful ribs you can get. For the Iberico ribs in this recipe, I bought supermarket Iberico ribs at a price of 8 euros. That's just crazy, right? 8 euros for Iberico ribs. Such a low price and why is that? That's because these ribs are waste. That's right, normally if you buy ribs, you buy it with a lot of meat on them. But these ribs are waste, look, they cut it all the way to the bone, so all the meat that was on the ribs is gone. So you got these, what we call shiners. When you smoke these ribs, you're gonna see the ribs and basically you just get a little bit of meat on the, in between the ribs. But that doesn't mean these are not good ribs. And actually they fit perfect to our recipe idea of today. Everybody can eat Iberico every day. You can have a fantastic cut of meat. It's right there in the supermarkets. You can have it, you can save up for it. You can have it on a Saturday, Sunday. But the whole idea behind this was I wanted to go cheap because our secondary dish is patatas bravas, which in the past used to be a really cheap dish that you can buy at a Spanish restaurant and all these restaurants had their own version of patatas bravas. So this could be something that you actually can find in a Spanish bar. Iberico ribs, patatas bravas. Can it get any better than that? Now back to our ribs. In the southern parts of Europe, there's not much smoking of meat in any kind. Of course they have some, but it's not typically part of their cooking. They would rather just cook it directly over the fire, grill their pork ribs, especially with so little meat on it and so much fat, as the Iberica has tons and tons of fat, so it's well protected from drying out. And they will season it with just a little bit of salt, and that's what we're going to do. All right, I got three of these ribs, because it's me, Morrison, Denise, and I want my own ribs. I know them, they're gonna steal all of my ribs, they're gonna eat them, aren't you, Morrison? That's why I took some precaution and I made sure I had three of these racks of ribs, so there's enough for everybody to go around. No more stealing my ribs, Mr. Morrison. Ay, ay, ay. Before we season our ribs, we're going to take a closer look at them. We got a nice large rack. We got the bones popping there, but, but still a little bit of meat left. When we take a look at the back, we see that we got a membrane. And this is the important difference between smoking and grilling meat. We're going to make maximum use of the membrane. We're going to use it as a shield it's going to protect the ribs from drying out while grilling. For our seasoning, we're using the Fleur de Sel sea salt. This is a really light sea salt, and basically it's the top of the sea salt that they shave off while drying the salt. And the rest just goes away as these hard rock salts, hard sea salt, but this is really, really light and fluffy. So it needs a little bit extra, but the texture is really nice. We'll sprinkle that onto our ribs, and we're going to do this from a high distance. So it spreads out really nice and evenly. Let's preheat our grill, but Morrison, I find a problem with the grill. What? I, I, I can't figure out which color light I want, because look, I got all these colors in the grill. Now it's yellow, now it's light blue, we got dark blue, I got, I got options. Never mind, we'll just start grilling, I'll figure it out. Now we're gonna be grilling these ribs, yes, I already told you guys that, but what is important with grilling ribs like this is to go as low as possible. So we want the temperature to be low instead of nice and hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on all burners, but turn them all the way down. And now we're getting a nice even low heat on our grill. We'll put the ribs on with the membrane side down because remember the membrane is going to protect the meat from drying out. We'll close the lid and slowly let these ribs come up to temperature. Understand properly, we're not looking to grill these to get a really crunchy outside on the beginning. It's not a sausage. It needs time. It needs time to slowly heat up, break down the tissues, let the fat melt out, and it's going to be so juicy. You just got to do it right. So 
low and slow grilling over direct heat. And while we wait for the ribs to be done, it's time to peel our potatoes. I got some lovely Victoria potatoes from the Dutch soil. These things are awesome. Perfect for our fries. Well, patatas bravas. What do you think, Morrison? You think the Spanish stole patatas bravas from the Dutch and Belgian fries? I bet it was the Dutch people. Although we steal a lot of stuff, so... Let's cut the potatoes. I'm cutting up the potatoes, and if we look at them, I got some smaller chunks, I got some bigger chunks, and that's the cool thing about the patatas bravas. Of course, the main things are these bigger chunks that we need to cook them all the way through and fry them crunchy on the outside. But then you get these smaller pieces in between and they're gonna be so awesome and crunchy. They're gonna be like the little treats that are in your patatas bravas. So don't worry too much about getting equal sizes. We'll rinse these potatoes off in cold water and then when the water is clear, we'll bring it to a boil. And the potatoes are done when they are almost all the way cooked through. The boiling of the potatoes took around six minutes and now it's important that we let them cool all the way down. So we're going to place them on a cooling rack and the air will spin around it and cool it. If we would fry them now, they would cook all the way through and they would through and fall apart and they wouldn't be real patatas. And this is always a good time to start working on your brava sauce. And the brava sauces, well, there's not just one recipe, there are so many. Every restaurant has its own brava sauce. It's the signature of the chef. And I'm gonna give you mine, don't share it. We'll start by chopping fine three coves of garlic. Now we'll peel an onion and dice it fine. Of course you can make an easy brava sauce by using powders, onion powder, garlic powder, but I don't want to. The fresh ingredients, they will taste so amazing. And I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Now we're going to soften up our onions and garlic. We're going to use this beautiful cast iron skillet. We'll put it on our infrared side burner and hit the ignition. We'll drizzle in a little bit of olive oil and drop in our onion and garlic. We're looking for nice glazy onion and garlic. We want to make sure that the garlic doesn't burn and become bitter. It's time to add our paprika powder. We want a lot of color. That's why we're adding one and a half tablespoon of paprika powder. But we have to be quick. The paprika powder will burn easily. We're also going to add one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and then we'll add chicken stock. This is the chicken stock that I made after making the last chicken video. It's always good to save your scraps and make something delicious out of it. Now we're quickly going to taste the sauce. A lot of good paprika flavor. It still needs salt. I didn't have chicken stock with salt, so it needs definitely quite a lot of salt and we can have some black pepper in there. Two pinches will do the trick and a couple of grinds on the old pepper mill. Oh yeah, now we're getting close. I'm still missing a little bit of that brava, that, that punch. It needs to be a little bit spicy. You can make this as spicy as you want. If you use this, you're gonna love it anyway. But if you want it spicy, you can add a little bit of cayenne powder. So, and since I like a little heat, I'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon. Now we have the right color, we have the right flavor, but we don't have the right consistency. We need to grind this down for the onion and the garlic to completely disappear from the structure. We want a smooth sauce. We'll pour this in our grinder. Make sure you get everything in there. Grind it up until you got a smooth paste. Let's see if this worked out. Oh, wow, look at that color. Final taste test, I promise. This is fantastic. This is gonna go so well with our patatas bravas. In the meantime, we're keeping an eye on our ribs, making sure we flip them, rotate them, and even replace them on the grill because some spots are hotter than the others so we're going to keep moving them around to make sure they cook evenly with the sauce done the potatoes cooled down it's time to start frying for frying i'm going to be using a pan with a tall side we're going to put oil in and we're cooking on a barbecue so we got to be safe i want a high side so when the oil starts burning, it doesn't overflow and doesn't drop down into the fire. This is a safety precaution. I'll put some oil in the pan. You can use any oil that you like. You can use beef tallow, you can use olive oil, you can use sunflower. Just make sure that you got a high enough smoke point. If you want to find out about that, check out the link 
up in the corner. We'll let the oil come up to temperature and we're taking a thermometer to measure the temperature. Again, we're just trying to be safe. We don't want our oil to be hot for two reasons. One, we gotta cook it slow the first time we actually fry our potatoes and we don't want our oil to be hot because it's unsafe. So we're looking for an oil temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. Even though we're frying our potatoes on the grill, I still want to keep my eye on the ribs. I'm just constantly moving them around, making sure we get a good amount of heat on all sides and everything is crisping up. Grilling ribs is an art form. It's partially skills that you develop over time and partially it's common sense. We're just looking at these ribs, we're just seeing them develop. Everywhere you have an, uh, a pale color, you want a little bit more color. So we're just moving and rotate them. And if you see the colors develop, if you see the meat shrink down and the bones pumping up, you know you're on the right route. You can clearly see that the meat over here is tearing up. So this is about done. And another telltale sign is that this bone is already starting to pop out and a little while longer and it's going to be, well, or at least completely detaching from the meat. On the other hand, I can see that over here the membrane doesn't have a lot of color. I still want it to crispen up. So I just got to keep moving it and I'm going to flip this around, get some more color on it. If we look at the top side, we see that our meat is developing enough color. So this side is basically done. We need to focus on the bottom side. And that is how we're going to make these ribs the perfect grilled Iberico ribs. Now on to our frying. Time to put our potatoes in. Now be careful, don't drop them in, just gently let them sink into the pan. And now you can see why I wanted the pan with high sides. Because the potatoes are going to fill up the pan, the oil is rising and we don't want it to go over the sides. An important thing to keep in mind is when you drop the potatoes in, the temperature of the oil is going down. So if you're at around 160 and you don't have much power underneath, just put a little bit of the potatoes in. In our case, we got a lot of power. So we can hold this at 160 degrees Celsius easily with the power that's in that burner. Frying the patatas in two stages will make them extra crispy. And the first time frying them is just to get a nice yellow color on them and a good base crunch. It's time to take them out. We don't want to go all the way to brown. This is just the first stage. We'll take them out of the pan and let them cool down again. Let's check on the ribs because they should be done by now. Wow, they're looking good. Take a closer look at this. We can see that the fat is coming out of the meat and actually is bubbling up to the surface. And this is the crunchy exterior of our meat. Look at the beautiful texture. It's going to provide us with a lot of great mouth feeling. We know that the ribs are done when we can poke through them easily. And all we can feel is like a butter soft consistency of the meat and then like a parchment paper feeling of the membrane. There's also another telltale sign to see that the ribs are done, and that's the bending test. Just lift the ribs up, and you can see that if I lift them up, we're getting like the meat is shredding already. So underneath their own weight, they're already starting to fall apart. Mm. I wasn't eating. I was just tasting. I just got to make sure that the, the flavors are right. Now we'll take the ribs off the grill and we'll put them in aluminum foil. This amazing stuff called aluminum foil is also called tin foils in other parts of the world. There we go. Just stack them on top of each other and then we'll fold this up. There we go. Tuck them in nice and safely. We're going to let these rest. And what the resting does is it will relax the fibers of the meat and will let the juices of the fat flow into the meat. And that will make the ribs extra juicy and tasty. Oh, can't wait to sink my teeth into those. But first, we gotta finish our patatas bravas. Our oil has now come up to 180 degrees Celsius and it's time to do the second fry. And the second fry we're cooking on a higher temperature because we don't want to cook the potato. We just want to give it that extra crunch on the outside. A quick, short, hot fry will do the job. Our patatas are done. Time to take them off, but first thing to do is turn off the gas. We're gonna put them on the cooling rack to let the oil drip off. While we wait for our patatas to cool down and become a good eating temperature, we're going to make a spice mix to make them taste even better. We'll start with one teaspoon of fleur de sel, add another teaspoon of paprika powder, 
half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix it all up, and now we add it up with an amazing flavor booster. Of course, we gotta do the quick taste test. Mm. It's predominantly paprika and salt, but it's a great flavor booster for our patatas. The excess fat dripped off our patatas. We'll put it in a bowl. Listen to the sound of that. I will put on some of that spice mixture. Carefully, you can always add more. And then we'll shake it up. I will volunteer myself this time to taste the patatas and test the crunchiness. The patatas first, without the sauce. That is so crunchy. That's just crazy. Are you guys getting that sound? I just want to make sure you guys get this crunch. Oh. Now we'll take a nice big chunk, dip it in our sauce, and see how that sauce actually tastes with our patatas. Morsen, if I weren't Dutch, I would say this is better than fries with mayonnaise. No, I can't say it, so officially it's not true, but this stuff is really good. This is a fantastic recipe and it tastes amazing. I, as a Dutch guy, I can never say that, but it's freaking good. It's freaking good. Let's unpack the ribs and check out what they look like. Ooh, looking good. Look at how warm they are. Well, let's see if they can tear up. Ooh, look at how easy that is. Yeah, that meat is just super tender. It almost falls apart. Oh. <laughs> if this is waste meat, I can eat waste meat all day. And that for this price, this is a real treat. Super, super tender pork ribs from the Iberico pork. Just a little bit salt and grilled for a long time at a low temperature. Mm. I can't believe they just used to consider this a poor man's food. All right, let's take that thumbnail picture. Denise will be plating up that sauce. I gotta cut me some ribs. Oh man, this is all looking so good. Let's get a little off center. Make this look freakingly awesome. All right, I got my expert taste tester over here. We are ready to dive into these Iberico ribs at a price of $8 for a slab of ribs. $8. What are we gonna do first? Patatas eat bravas? It. Yeah, of course we're gonna eat it, but what? I wanna Patatas bravas? Yeah. Okay, we'll go for it. I wanna go two, but I already had it. I go in seconds. Go ahead. This is good, right? I have to taste another one. It's like fries, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like fries. Who would have guessed? I, um, I didn't know. No, it's good. It's really good. It's like a, a salty paprika flavor. Yeah. But with the onion and the garlic, it really makes it well, as a, on a holiday. And it really fits the barbecue style as well. I'm gonna go for the ribs. These things are amazing. And there's still a lot of meat in there. If you're just gonna go in between. Mm. With the membrane, it's a bit tough. That's just because it's parchment. Our beer is so greasy, so tasty. Mm. What if we just dip this in the, bra the Brava sauce? Somebody's coming, Morsi. I think we got a visitor. So Morrison's mom, mom just dropped by and uh, she's just here to help us eat it all. Lekker patatjes, probeer maar. Patatas bravas. Mm. Yeah? Okay. See? Morrison's mom's approved. Morrison, you have to give him your portion, right? You understand that. Spanish ribs, Spanish fries. These guys in Spain, they know what they're doing. It tastes amazing. I think we should give Hans from the excavator some as well. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. And a special thank you to our patrons and our YouTube members. You guys freaking rock. See, that's what I'm saying every time. Well, if you guys enjoyed it, then leave us a big thumbs up and... Comment down below. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then... It's my collection. And keep on grilling. Mm. We have to call Hans. Hans has been working here all the time. He didn't get anything. Rip. Come pakken. I got eten. So it we like a little seal some.